Okay, so we're now on box 10, which is a little bit over a third way through the boxes uh, that I have to unpack for uh, from the collection here. So this box is a box that was at Melcon. So these are games that were in the Melcon library. Um, I have Secrets, Bruno Fiducci and Eric Lang. Oh, I like Eric Lang and Bruno Fiducci for that. Um, I've come across like more and more games that they've done. So this one looks really interesting. So I think it's like one of those secret identity game. Um, and you're either, um, what does it say? Are you sure you offered them the right person? Secret is a secret team game of bluff and influence. And you're either, um, like on the Russian team or the other team and then, or you could be the hippie apparently. So it looks really interesting. I'm interested in trying this one. Um, what does it say for four to eight players? So this is a bigger group, uh, game. So it'll be cool to try. Um, I also have Avalon and from what I understand, this is by the makers of the resistance. A whole new way to play your favorite game. So it's kind of a spin-off from The Resistance. Uh, and it's more like a fantasy theme on it. Secret identities, deductions, and deceptions. So this is another one I'd like to try. Then I have Welcome to Your Perfect Home, which is a flip and write game. So you have... Um, a sheet here that has like kind of a neighborhood and you'll be flipping and getting house numbers that you'll be adding so you got to maintain the order um, and then you add them to each street and different things get added on I've played this a few times um, it was neat so and when, when like the flip and right and the roll and right were coming this one was a big one that's kind of when I first discovered them so interesting um, I also have in here oh Sushi Go Party. Um, Sushi Go Party plays very much like Sushi Go. It's pretty much the same thing. And as I'm holding it, I can hear all the little things falling. Um, but with the Sushi Go Party is you can change up the cards that you play with. So it has a lot more replayability. And there's one that has more take that. One that's more like more points to collect. One that's more geared towards two players. So like it, they suggest different uh, combination depending on who's playing right so so she go party and that one's great and then i have marrying mr darcy uh this is a card game based on the pride and prejudice and you play as one of the ladies from the book and you're trying to acquire different you know it could be dowry could be beauty could be wit and you're acquiring these skills things and trying to attract your perfect mate and then at the end of the game, once you've played this, you're going to go around to see who um, you kind of connected with based on what their requirement is. And then they'll, they'll propose or like, so you could be, and it goes from like the least, um, your least suitable bow um, to the one that would give you the most points. And then depending on who you are, who gives you the most points. Um, and then you'll kind of see about which proposal you're getting and then you have to decide, okay, well, does he propose? Do you accept or do you refuse the proposal and go to the next bow that hopefully would be, give you more prestige points, right? So, and you kind of go through, it's, it's a funny, funny, fun little card game. Plus I have two ex expansion in here. I have the Emma expansion and I have the undead expansion based on the TV, uh, the movie, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I watched after I got this game, just to kind of check, and it's hilarious. I really recommend people watch it, because it was, it's Pride and Prejudice. It's like all the same, you know, with the British and the old fashioned, but they're all battling zombies. <laughs> it's great, it's worth watching. And then I have Lost Cities. And Lost Cities is a two-player card game where you're going on expeditions. And the moment you start an expedition, you're at negative uh, 20 points. So you want to make sure that you add enough uh, card to accumulate points to make it so that it's a successful expedition. Um, but, you know, so if I'm noticing you're going on the blue expedition and I have some good blue cards, not enough to, for me to start the expedition, I may not want to discard those so that you can pick them up so I would keep them in my hands and hope that you know 
uh, you don't score as high on that expedition. It's interesting. Um, then I have Bonanza. Bonanza is a great game. And it's a, it's a negotiation game because you have your cards and you can't organize them. And you got to play the one that's in front and you got to plant it on your turn. But you're trying to get a set collection. So you don't want to plant what, like you ideally want to plant what's in your field. So you would negotiate you know, like I have a yellow bean up for grab. Do you want a yellow bean? I would take a wax bean or a stink bean. And you're just trying to get rid of what you don't need to collect what you do need so that you can um, build up enough. Because the more beans you have in your garden when you um, when you kind of sow them or kind of um, cultivate them, then the more points they're going to be worth. Um, this is a genius, genius game, and I love it. So, Bonanza, and it gets played quite a bit. Then I have Watergate, which is a two-player game, and Watergate is so cool. It's like a tug-of-war based on the Watergate scandal. Um, I got looking into it, kind of get more, and in this game, it's still thematic. So, one player plays as the Nixon administration trying to hide some stuff and destroy documents so that Nixon stays in office. And then the other player plays as a journalist trying to unravel all of this and to expose it all. Um, and it's such a neat, neat game. I really enjoy this one. And that's Watergate. Then I have, oh, this is heavy, Architect of the West Kingdom, which is part of the West Kingdom series. Um, and this one was the first one in there. And it's a worker placement game. And it's really neat. This is the first time I've played a game that had where you don't collect your meeples. They stay on the board and you can send more meeples to the same location and activate it again. And then the more meeple that you have there, the more you get out of it. Um, it's a very, very cool game. I really enjoy this one. And honestly, like it's a very small, compact board for what it is. Um, then in here, I also have a stockpile. Um, I used to work for a company, an education company that would teach stock and real estate investing. So I really like stock themed games. And this one is amazing. Plus it's great. Like they have all these characters that you could play as that resemble somebody that's in the stock industry, you know, so Martha Stewart, and then she gets insider's information, which is what she went to jail for. Um, and then you have Warren Buffett, which basically you just have a lot of money to start with. Um, and then you get some information, the stocks are going to shift and then you buy stock and you sell stocks. And it's a really, really neat and fun, uh, game. So stockpile. Then I have happy pigs and happy pig is an economic game. So you are raising pigs. And they are, you know, the smaller the pigs, the less they're worth. But then you fatten them up and then they're worth more money. You now you could buy a big fat pig, but then you, you know, like you would buy it at the value of what that pig is. Well, if you raise them and kind of breed them and then fatten them up, then you kind of cr generate income that way. And then at the end, you sell all the pigs that you got and it's whoever has the most pay, uh, money is the winner. Uh, but you play through a few years, so it goes through the seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Um, and then at the end of winter, if you have any pigs that aren't vaccinated, they're going to die. So you want to make sure that you vaccinate them. So you got to buy vaccines. And what's really interesting with this one is that on your turn, you're going to flip a card for that season and it's going to tell you what action is available. So it could be like, you know, four breeding is available this round, five market uh, purchases available, for um, market sale is available or you can do up to f seven feed and then you're going to look at your card and you're going to pick which action you want to do and you put your card face up uh, face down and they all reveal and then it could be like okay great well three people picked feed and there's seven of those so then two's going to get three and the person that was closest to the first player is going to get four and maybe you were hoping to feed all six of your pigs, but now you only get to feed three of them. Um, and that's how you fatten them up to the next level. So then you would trade the, the pig card you have and put a bigger one. And it's fun. It's neat. This is one that we've enjoyed quite a bit. And the kids really enjoy this one. And they ask to play this often. Happy pigs. 
And then I have Agricola, all creatures big and small. So this is the two player version of Agricola. And it plays quite a bit quicker as well. I've enjoyed Agricola. Um, and for me, we, like, I used to live on a farm. So the theme is something I relate to. Um, and the kids really enjoy that theme as well. But the, with the, um, this version, honestly, it gives you that Agricola feel, but it's much quicker. And it's kind of a slightly simplified version of it. I don't think you have to feed your people in this one. So, but you still get, you know, the worker placement. You get the animals that you're putting into. You got to build your fences still. So it's a neat one. Um, and then I have, oh, Blood Rage. I love this game. And this is a Viking theme area control game. And you're upon, Valhalla is upon you. And basically, um, the world is is kind of falling apart but as you're going to die you're going to die with glory and in battle and you know like and you're collecting as much glory point as you can before the world is destroyed basically and it's a, such a fun fun neat game really enjoy this one blood rage um and then i have oh you can come meadow um meadow is such a cute game it's beautiful. Each card has a unique watercolor type art that is was all created by the artist here. And there's, so there's tons of art in here and it looks amazing. And you're drafting these cards from um, the board here, but you got to spend your arrow type cards to kind of indicate which one you will pick up. So you're going to put them in the notch. So if you put one that's here that has a two, then you're going to collect two cards in, and that would be the card that you get. And it could be that's like, darn it, I wanted the one that was next to that, but you've used up the notch. So as you go in, it becomes harder and harder to get the cards that you want, but you're building a tableau with it, and you're putting these on your, uh, on your player area. And so let's say I have a bird in my hand, but in order to be able to play the bird, I need to have a grub and then I do have a grub here and I can cover it but I have another card that needed a grub so I'm trying to say well maybe I want to cover this one I'll cover that one. like you know it's it's interesting kind of a set collection but they're a symbol that you need to have in order to be able to acquire the cards but then when you play a card on top of a one it's going to cover a symbol so you really got to make sure you you figure out what you wanted to do um then I have a fallout shelter I played Fallout quite a bit, and it's kind of like a story-driven uh, dungeon crawl. Almost, you have all these tiles, and then you're kind of gonna explore and then uncover the tiles, and different things happen. And then, as you decide what's gonna happen, new cards are gonna get into the deck that changes the story, and it is great. And this, I've heard great things about it. So, Fallout Shelter, the board game. I've never played it though, so. Because I enjoyed the first Fallout game so much, and I've heard such great things about it, I ordered this one, um, and I still need to get it played. So, what else is in here? We have Keyflower. I love this game. This is such a neat worker placement bidding game. Because um, you have all these tiles in the middle that you're going to be bidding on. Um, and then when you bid on it, let's say I bid it by placing your meeples onto it. So if I place, um, let's say, uh, a blue meeple. Now, if anybody wants to outbid me, they're going to have to do it with a blue meeple because I just assigned that color to it. Um, and they would have to put two meeples on it. But maybe like, you know what, you guys fight over it. I just want to do the action that's on it. So I'm going to play a meeple on top of it to activate the action and collect the resources. And then if you win... The, like the tile, you add that to your village. It's a such a fun, fun game. Lots of analysis paralysis if you're playing with people that have a hard time making up what they want to do. So keep that in mind with this one. Um, last time I played it, we played five players. Um, but it flowed super smooth. Everybody was just very decisive in what they wanted to do. Um, and it was amazing. So that's Keyflower. Then I have Agricola. So we had the all creatures big and small, and this is, that was a two-player version. This is the full game version. Um, so it plays a little bit, well, quite a bit longer, probably up to three times as long. Um, there is a bit more to it, but it's 
Um, it has like little wooden animal in it. It's it's a great one. So that's Agricola. And then I have Marvel Villainous. Um, so Villainous is Disney based, and then they did a Marvel one, and you have all these different bad guys that you could play as. And um, in this one is you're going to have your like your villain card and your hero cards and you're trying to kind of create your plot like you're trying to go through your evil scheme in order to win and the other players aren't just going to let you do your evil scheme so they're going to try to mess you up um so that they can get their you know evil scheme in place and it's a neat neat thing the like all the characters look super cool um and it's like it's not quite like it's a little bit kind of an abstract uh, setup of it, but it looks super cool. Um, so when it came out with the Marvel one, I was like, oh, okay, kind of. We've been watching, going through all the Marvel series because I hadn't seen uh, quite a few of them. So we've been going through the series, and then um, I wanted to get that one. And then we have, following the Marvel theme, Marvel United. Um, this is one that I still have to play. I hear it's a fairly simple game to play. It's a cooperative game and it's a lot of fun, but I just haven't quite uh, gotten it there. And then you have these little meeples that you get to, uh, meeples, like little miniatures that is part of the game. And now they've released a lot of version of this that kind of brings out more characters. This is just a base game and I'm, I haven't even played it yet, so I'm content with that and I'll just stick around. Uh, with just a base game, but yeah, I'm excited to play that too. Um, and then I have Magic Maze, and Magic Maze is such a neat, neat game. Uh, the first time somebody explained this one to me, he's like, well, in this game, you don't talk. And I was like, oh, mm, no, I'm out. He's like, no, no, it's really good. He's like, no, no, that's okay. I, I like to talk. But it's it's interesting. You're going through this maze, but first you gotta you start off at this one area. You went on this dungeon attack and you weren't successful, so you made it out, but you're beaded and battered and you've lost your weapons. So you go to this mall, basically, and you gotta go into the store that sells your weapon, but you didn't get any gold, so you're gonna have to steal it and get out as fast as you can. And all four characters needs to do that. And what's interesting is you control all four characters. It's just you control the direction. So if you're playing like multiple players, maybe I control moving north. And one person will control going east. And then one person go, controls going up and down escalators. And one person controls going south. So if we need to get this one guy from the middle area up to escalator, down the hall, and up into the store, and then trying to out through the exit, well then... All of us are going to have to work together to do the movement that needs to happen at that time. So I can move it north. Then it needs to go up the escalator. So the person needs to go and go up the escalator. Then the person that controls going east will move it east. And and so it's, it's so much fun. Um, and it starts with a simple version. And then they add on more and more and more. And you kind of play to see how far you can go. It's great. I've liked it. And then I played sometimes where the one person was not grasping and completely forgot what they could do in the action they controlled. And that was even more fun. I've never laughed so hard. And it was great. So that's Magic Maze. And then in here I have Camel Up. So Camel Up is a, ca or a camel racing game. And you're racing camels, but you're bidding on them as well. So not one camel is yours. You're just trying to figure out which one you think is going to win and to put your bid on that camel and then that's how you're going to get the most money so you bid you can bid like on every leg of the race so every round but then you also bid on the the uh overall winner as well this plays high player counts as well you can play up to eight players um the board is amazing you open it and there's this big pop-up palm tree that comes out and then there's the little plastic pyramid that has all the dice and you shake it and then you push a button that releases a dice and that's the camel that moves and depending on the numbers on it then you move that camel along that many points and it's a lot of fun i really enjoy camel up and then i have <sighs> aeon's end this game will beat you up so bad i've i think we've won it once um and it's a 
It's a cooperative deck builder game, and in this one, what's interesting is you never shuffle your cards. So when you're done, you take your cards and you just stack them up again and you go through it again. So when you're buying cards, you want to try to create combinations so that you're trying to buy them at specific times so that they will land up with some of the other cards so that you can create these combo. Um, and then there's different bad guy scenario things that you can play as different cards that will be coming out so there's a lot of replayabilities but i really really enjoy aeon's end um apparently i enjoy being games that beats me up um and then the next one i have is dixit dixit is so cool it's kind of an abstract party game so everybody's gonna be getting cards that have like these really weird images on it and then you're going to take your turn and you're going to say, okay, um, deep in thoughts or some sort of description that's fairly vague. And everybody's going to look through their cards. They're going to pick the one that best match the description you've given. And then you're going to take all of the people's cards. You're going to shuffle them all together. And then everybody's going to try to decide which one they think your card was. If everybody guesses your card, you were too obvious and you don't get any points. Um, if some people guess your card, but not everybody, then you get a point for every, you get a point, and then everybody who guessed yours correctly gets a point as well. And then um, if people guessed on your card incorrectly, well, then you get points for that, for being so close and so on. It is cool. I really like Dixit. Unfortunately, not everybody in my family share uh, my love for Dixit. My my youngest, Patrick, enjoys it quite a bit. Um, Lily, my stepdaughter, and my spouse, not so much. Um, and they're completely okay if they never have to play Dixit ever again. So, um, but it's one that, I mean, I guess it depends on where you're at, uh, how you feel about it. And it's the abstract thinking, I think, is what kind of gets my my spouse and that's what he doesn't like about it um but i i really like it and then that's the last game in this box here so that was box number nine so we're about a third of the way through the game collection so be sure to tune in tomorrow to see the next game that i have in my collections bye everybody